ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. It looks as if we're in time for the celebration. Ah, this big day for Americans, Kimisabe. February the 12th, Lincoln's birthday. Gettysburg Address will be given by Phil Beach. Phil Beach? I may remember him, Kimisabe. Him plenty bad. Well, he's paid for his mistakes. According to this sign, it looks like he's changed. Maybe, maybe not. Come to think of it, I've heard he's married and living on the right side of the law. Now that good, if too, Kimisabe. Let's look him up, see if he is. No, Ann, I'm not going. Lincoln Day business is all right, but I've got too much on my mind. But they're counting on you, Phil. Darling, it's not really important, not nearly as important as other things. Besides, I don't want to go alone. You don't have to. I'm going with you. But you can't, darling. You heard what the doctor said. He's been a sick girl, and you're not well yet. Well, then go without me. Maybe I will. But there's something else first. Something else? What? Phil, are you going to see Dad? Phil, please, don't. Do you think I'm looking forward to it? Looking forward to begging? Yeah. But there's just a chance, the old miser. Just a chance he might be decent enough to help his own daughter. Phil, don't go. You know how he hates you, and you have such a temper, both of you. Darling, I've got to try. I'm going down to the shop. Hello, Lefty. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. World treating you all right? I'm not complaining. Neither am I. We're making it treat us all right. Ain't we, Fingers? Yeah. Meet my new partner, Fingers Blake. My ex-partner, Phil Beach. Real sociable. Haiti. Look, boys, if you want a meal and stay around a day or two, you're, you're welcome. But if it's a job you're after. <laughs> <laughs> a job? <laughs> you're a funny man, Phil. Always was. You know, I remember the warden used to let us put on shows now and then. I was pretty good, but uh, Phil here was the best of all. He used to recite and make funny turns. Act. Like now. Get to the point. What do you want? Money. Could you use some? <laughs> yeah, I certainly could. But not your kind. No more easy money for me. Are you sure, Phil? You know, the three of us could knock over that ten-pot bank and get out of town before the sheriff ever knew what was happening. We'd split the loot and fingers would meet keep right on going. They'd be looking for three men, Phil. Nobody'd link you up with it. Come on, Phil. Give us a little help. Even your wife won't know. I'll give you help. Now, get out of here. Get out quick. All right. See you, Phil. Mrs. Beach, uh, please don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I know who you are. You're the lone ranger in Tonto. Uh, Phil told you about us? Yes. You sent him to prison. Yes, ma'am, we did. Because of that, you will not like us, maybe. I'm grateful to you, and so is Phil. What you did straightened him out. Well, we're very glad you feel that way. Is Phil home? We'd like to say hello. I wish he were. Right now, he's paying a call on my father. And I'm worried. I'm so worried. If there's anything we could do, we'd like to help. They hate each other so. I wonder, could you, would you do me a great favor? I mean, go there and see if everything's all right. Uh, we'd be glad to. Dad's ranch is about two miles from here. Just follow the road going north. Can't miss it. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Tonto. Thank you very much. Look there. It's the Lone Ranger and his engine sidekick. Well, those two go on, we'll all breathe easy. Just make sure you don't miss, because I don't want to tangle with them two. Come on. Get out of here. 
right here. Fast. Look, you must have two men. Let's find out who they are. Tell us why you try to kill us. I'll tell you nothing. Never mind, Tano. He's one criminal who'll be out of circulation for a while. I think you'd better take him to the sheriff in Glen Springs. And what about another fellow? Well, I'll try to pick up his trail. But first, I've got to keep my promise to Phil's wife and find Phil. You come snooping around here. And? Dan bid me not to come. Well, that calls it snooping, so just snoop right on out of here. I'm not leaving till I say what I came to say. And your daughter is sick, Mr. Hawkins, very sick. The doctor says she won't get well unless she can go away for six months, maybe a year. Well, she's your wife. Why don't you send her away? You know, I don't have the money. The saddle shop isn't, well, it's just barely making expenses. But if you want me the money, I'll pay it back, so help me. After all, it's for your own daughter. I ain't got no money. I'm a poor man. Now, now look, you didn't said you say, so, so get out of here. You miserable skinflint. Well, well, why should I help her? I told her not to marry you, you jailbird. Now, she have made a bed, let her lie in it. Go, go, go on. Go on, hit an old man. That's all you're good for. Now, get out of here. on the side of the law. Does Phil Beach here to see you? Yes. Are you his father-in-law? Yes, I am. I'm glad to hear that. Your daughter was afraid you two might come to blows. Well, taint his fault. We didn't. <laughs> Dirty yellow cur. What makes you feel so strongly against him? Why, he's a thief and a jailbird. Ain't that enough? <laughs> no, sir. He'll never get none of my money either. And Anne ain't going to get no money. And darling, she's married to him. Phil Beach paid for his crime. What have they done to make you feel so vindictive against them? What have they done? She married him, didn't she? Against my will. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's what the Bible said, and she didn't do it. No, sir. And she ain't going to get none of my money either. The Bible also says, the love of money is the root of all evil. You might give that some thought. Still in town? I am, but fingers ain't. I could really use a partner now, Phil. You need money, you said so. Well, so do I. How about it, Phil? Just one little job, that's all. Just one little job. We'll never see each other again. We could knock that bank over easy tomorrow. It's close today, count of Lincoln's birthday. Lincoln's birthday? Yeah, it's too bad, but then... No, no, it's not too bad. We can't rob the bank, but... Lefty... We're about the same size, and our voices aren't too different. I've heard you recite. Suppose you could uh, memorize that by 4.30 this afternoon. What is it? Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Pretty short. Sure, I can learn it. Why? Now, if you'll recite it dressed as Lincoln this afternoon, I'll give you $500. $500? Will you do it? <laughs> Man, you just got yourself a reciter. I'm very grateful to you. Phil, I'm so glad you're back. 
Here's an old friend of yours, dropped in out of the blue. The Lone Ranger. Phil, it's good to see you again. I hope you feel the same. I, uh, well, of course, I'm tickled to death. I was just surprised, that's all. I never expected to see you or anyone connected with the law anywhere within miles from here. I thought I'd like to hear you give the Gettysburg Address. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. I don't do it that well. That's not so, Phil. You do it wonderfully. Everybody says so. Your neighbors think a great deal of you. I'm proud of you, Phil. Uh, I've got to get ready. Excuse me, please? Of course. The way you see his costume, it's perfect. He's made quite a study of Lincoln, hasn't he? Oh, yes. He's worshipped Lincoln for years. Mrs. Beach, with a hero like that, he certainly can't go wrong. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers... Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. <laughs> Phil, are you going to take all day? Be right there. Phil, if I didn't know it was you, I wouldn't believe it. Sometimes I don't believe it either. I don't look much like Lincoln, but I certainly don't look too much like myself, do I? <laughs> you certainly don't. Phil, it's almost time that you were going. You and the Ranger can ride into town together. Uh, all right. Uh, I thought that's fine. I'm afraid I'll have to go on ahead. I want to have a talk with Sheriff Trumbull before the festivities start. But I'll be on hand for your Gettysburg address. I hope we meet again, Mrs. Beach. I hope so, too. Darling, why don't you take me with you in the buckboard? No. But, but I'm feeling better. Really, I know I could go. I said no. I don't want you there. Why not? Because it would be too much of a tax on your strength, that's why. Please, now, let's not argue about it. All right. What are you looking for? Spirit gun from my beard. Well, it seems to be staying on quite well. I know, but I want some in case of an emergency. Oh, here it is. Bye, darling. See you as soon as it's over. Hey, um, you sure this thing won't come off, eh? It won't. I just put some more spirit gun on it. Now, you know what to do. Yeah. All right, I'll meet you here and have the money. Where are you going? Never mind. Now, five minutes after I leave, you go out and mingle with the townspeople until you get the Gettysburg address. Hey, he's right about that hombre that tried to kill you. Got word from Tucson. He's wanted there for armed robbery and murder. Ah, uh, we do a good job, Kimisabe. You sure did. Sheriff, there was one man who got away. I'd give a lot to know what happened to him. Well, listen, you're introducing Phil Beach. You want to hear him give a Gettysburg address? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Four score and seven years ago. Phil sure looks the part, don't he? Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. I finished the speech. Come on, get out of those clothes. I've got to get out there and mingle with the crowd. Sheriff? Mrs. Beach, you just get to town? Yes. Well, I'm certainly glad to see both of you again. Too bad you missed Phil's performance. He did a fine job. He did? Oh, dear. And I thought I'd come in to surprise him. Well, you missed all the speeches, but the day's just beginning. They're going to start the fireworks pretty soon. Say, why don't you come in the office and sit and rest a spell, Mrs. Beach? Why, thank you. I believe I will. All right. Now, where's the 500? Right here. Hey, you've got quite a haul there. I've got good use for it, too. i got better use for it. Hand it over. Hold it. <laughs> Sorry we 
can't stay and say goodbye to Phil, Mrs. Beach. But Tano and I better start looking for that other criminal, Blake's pal. We'll leave by the back door. All right, mister. I wonder where Phil is now. Oh, he's outside someplace. Come on, I'll help you look for him. Sheriff! 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 Sheriff, I done just been robbed by that jailbird, Phil Beach. Father, that's not well, true. What do you mean? You defend him? Well, I saw him. Now, well, hold on a minute, money. Hawkins. Why, wow, why, wow, you jailbird? You saw where I put my money in while ago. I thought you were stealing it. What are you talking about? I've been right here all this afternoon. Why, sure. The whole town saw him give the Gettysburg address. Why, well, why, well, he was still sized with just like him. And I followed him all the way to town. I know he took it. Did you see his face? Well, he had a handkerchief around it, didn't he? Well, did you or didn't you? Well, I, I, I don't know where... Uh... Hawkins, a masked man robs you. And the first thing you do is put the blame on your son-in-law. It's a good thing he's got an alibi. My deputy says you just saw a stranger riding out of town like the devil was after him. I'm going to form up a posse. Phil, get your horse. Meet me here in five minutes. Come on, Tom. Can't tell which way they go. Come on. I'm not robbing anymore. Recognize him, Tonto? Mm, face familiar. Left him alone, the bank robber. Well, that's right, Kimisabi. Well, here's the money he stole from Hawkins. Give it back to him. You give it to him, Phil. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Lincoln's address again, just as you did before. All right. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we're engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so dedicated and so conceived, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Fine words, Phil. Quoting a fine man, Abraham Lincoln. You know, don't you? The man who made the speech before made gestures with his left hand. You just made yours with your right hand. Lefty couldn't have known where Mr. Hawkins had hidden the money. But you did. 
You're right, Mr. Hawkins. I took your money. But I had to have it. I'm glad you told them, Phil. I'm proud. Hawkins, we all know why Phil took the money. But he's broken the law, and he must pay the penalty. Well, Mr. Hawkins, do you still think your son is a no-good jailbird? Or can you see him as the man he is? A man worthy of your help. Phil, Ann and I are going to be gone about six months till she gets well. I, I think we all ought to be back together again. <laughs> Maybe you can use a partner in that saddle shop. How does that sound to you, too? <laughs> hey, hey, where in tarnation did that masked man go? He's gone, Dad. He never stays around once his work is done. He's the best friend we've ever had. He's the Lone Ranger. Well, Silver! Away! 